Most soils are structured with pores left by worms and roots and with cracks due to the soil's shrinking and swelling. Dr. John Selker, now professor in the Department of Bioresource Engineering at Oregon State University, explained some research concerning macropore flow with which he was involved as a postdoctoral researcher at Cornell University. We're here in the Cornell Research Apple Orchard looking at how dye and water infiltrates into a heavy clay soil. Heavy clay soils are, are ones which we would naturally think would have the slowest infiltration because the, head, the clay is almost impermeable to water by conventional gender. But let's take a look at how 10 gallons of dye infiltrated through this ring. In less than four minutes, the 10 gallons of dye had soaked into this soil. And as you can see, the dye stained the upper layer where the grass had developed this root system very thoroughly. But once getting below the level of the grass roots, we get into these very fine channels of flow. So you can see by looking closely that the dye is actually following old root old old root paths and wormholes. And what we see then is that in fact, even though this soil is thought to have very low permeability, it in fact lets dye and water itself get to great depths in very short periods of time. Here's a typical chunk of soil. This is what we might call a ped, which is a unit of the soil. When you break up the soil, it falls into these pieces. And if you looked at this piece of soil, you might say, gee, the blue dye is everywhere. But actually, the blue dye is only following the breaks in the soil and the small root, the small holes created by the microscopic roots of the grass and other plants. So the question that we're trying to answer is how fast will the chemicals and pesticides that are used in modern agriculture, including the um, cultivation of apples, get down to the groundwater? And as you can see, it's not a question which is as simple as it might seem from your first inspection. Macropores are not only a problem for pesticide application in agriculture. They are also a problem for landfills and toxic waste dumps. Standard landfills are designed with liners and layers of dense clay. A dense clay can be almost impermeable, but cracks that develop in liners and throughout the clay provide tunnels for toxic leachate to leak through. Variations on this design are being researched. One actually takes advantage of another form of preferential flow, flow over sloping layers of coarse sand.